Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, we're talking about magnetic field and uh, today we'll talk about magnetic field lines. I'll explain basically what it means, though probably you, more, most of you at least, probably have heard about this and know what this is. But anyway, um, there is some sense in discussing these because it's related to the force which magnetic field actually exerts. So, magnetic field lines. Now, this uh, lecture is part of the uh, course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on unisor.com. I do suggest you to watch the lecture from the website. So you go to unisor.com, then it's uh, Physics for Teens, uh, the course name. Um, the topic is uh, Electromagnetism, and inside you will see um, the title called Magnetic Fields, and this is one of the lectures about magnetic fields. The same site actually contains a prerequisite Math for Teens course, which I do suggest you to take. Um, all courses are completely free, there are no ads, no financial uh, strings attached. Okay, so magnetic field. Well, field is a concept. It basically tries to explain what, what happens in the space around something which is a source of the field. Now, in our case, we are talking about space around a uh, permanent magnet, and we know that there is certain force which acts on some other um, objects uh, on the distance from this magnetic, uh, from the source of magnetic field. So this is the concept of the field. Now, if something is happening in the field, it means there are some forces which are acting. So right now we will talk about the forces. So the force which is exerted by the source of magnetic field through this concept of the field on some other object which we can usually um, qualify as a probe object. So we're talking about the forces now. The force um, has is a it's a vector, right? Remember mathematics? Force is a vector which has two characteristics, the magnitude and direction. Well, today we will mostly talk about direction of the force around the uh, source of magnetic field. Okay, so the next thing which kind of complicates the concept of a magnetic field is that um, in most cases the source of magnetic field has poles, North Pole and the South Pole. This is significantly different from electrostatic field. Electrostatic field is produced by el an electric charge and we can always talk about something which is which we call point charge. So it's an infinitesimally small um, electrically charged object which we can basically consider as mathematical point. You cannot have the mathematical point as the source of magnetic field because if you remember how we were explaining the concept of magnetism, there is always uh, two poles, north and south pole, uh, in, in any permanent magnet. And it's related to orientation of the electrons which are ro uh, rotating around certain axes. Um, and if all these axes are aligned properly and the planes of rotation are parallel to each other with all the electrons and the rotation is in the same direction, we have this magnetic uh, properties of the permanent magnet. So, we have two poles, which means we cannot really consider I it as a point. Maybe a model of like two points, which are infinitesimally close to each other, um, might actually serve certain purpose, but it's not easy. It's not easy. And infinitesimal distance between these two points is also doesn't make much sense mathematically. So they probably should be distanced from each other on, on the finite, some kind of a finite um, uh, distance. 
and this is more um, it's more corresponding to a Gilbert model of the magnetism which we were talking about in the previous lecture in any case we are not talking about a, a point as a simplest source of uh, the field we are talking about something a little bit more material more fine finite so what's the shape shape is important maybe two points well it's a model but let's talk about more practical sense probably you you, you understand that depending on the on the shape of the permanent magnet which is the source of magnetic field the field itself behaves differently I mean one thing if it's a if it's a bar magnet and another thing if it's a horseshoe magnet obviously things around uh, these uh, different magnets are different and the forces are different so I mean we have to choose something let's choose something which I consider a simplest um, uh, kind of a shape which is just a bar magnet so we're talking about a bar magnet and one of them one of these poles is north another is south so this is a source of magnetic field okay now there is another component whenever we are talking about um, the force field and uh, direction of the uh, uh, vectors which represent the forces I mean we have to talk about the probe object on which the field acts right so around this there is a field magnetic field and we have to choose some kind of a probe object and well considering my bar magnet is the simplest form let's choose um, the small light bar magnet as a probe okay fine so we have the shapes it's uh, it's a bar magnet okay now now let's think about this way we have two poles that's extremely important for magnetic field now since we have two poles and we have certain um, dimension of of the probe object well it, it 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 can actually involve in two kinds of uh, movement one movement is when the whole object probe object is moving that's a translational movement another is when it's turning right if we're talking about one single point there is only movement if we're talking about something which is actually well like a segment okay which has a finite length then we have to consider both translational movement when the center of this object is moving in some direction and translation uh, and, and rotational movement so two different kinds of movement so the field exerted by this permanent magnet which is the source exerts two kinds of motions in two kind well it exerts the force which causes two kinds of motions translational movement and rotational movement of the probe object okay so we have talked about this so now we can talk about magnetic lines now you have seen um, some photographs maybe you did yourself the experiment if you will drop certain number of um, small pieces of metal of iron uh, filings you know when you're filing you're, you have tiny pieces of, uh, of of iron if it's iron um, which if you will throw it onto this um, let's say a table where the permanent magnet is located they will organize themselves into these kinds of lines and we were talking about why because iron by, by itself is not a, a natural permanent magnet um, there is a special um, mineral called magnetite if I'm not mistaken 
um, however, it can be temporarily magnetized. So if iron filings, small, um, you, you, can, you can actually consider them as small uh, segments. It's a very, very thin line of a finite length. So this is, let's say, the fi filing, one individual one. So in the field of the permanent magnet, it's temporarily magnetized, which means the electrons inside of this little piece of iron are aligned properly under the influence of the magnetic field. And as soon as they are aligned, they become a temporary magnet themselves, which means they have North Pole and South Pole. And now, when you have a lot of these, we know that uh, similar poles are repelling each other and opposite poles are attracting each other. So they are actually going north, south, north, south, each one of them, eventually connecting to these guys. So if you will drop all these filings, they will connect to each other, north, south, north, south, north, south, and eventually the south goes to the north and the north goes to the south and we will have all these lines. Now let's think about what these lines represent. Basically what I'm saying is that the lines, these lines represent something which we can call magnetic field lines, um, which is, again, it's as artificial concept as the concept of a field. Now, the field is something which we have kind of came up with for our convenience to explain certain qualities. Magnetic field lines also explain certain things. So what do they explain? Well, for one, they explain how these iron filings are um, shaping when you're dropping them around this magnet. Well, that, that's good. But from the, from the concept of the force field, they represent certain about the forces. So what kind of forces we are talking about? Well, let's think about it. Here is um, a mental experiment. Consider around this permanent magnet there is a water. Now, uh, on the water there is something like, I don't know, a piece of wood, whatever, whatever is floating. And on this piece of wood we have placed another permanent magnet a small one, a probe um, magnet. Well, since this is water and this permanent magnet, the uh, probe magnet, probe object, is lying on the piece of wood which is, fl uh, which is floating on the surface of the water, well, there is a force between these two guys, right, between the source of magnetic field and the probe object. So the force will push or pull or whatever this a probe object to move in some direction. So the center will move and um, also the rotation will be, um, uh, uh, will be observed. So what exactly is the trajectory of the movement of the center of this magnet, which is floating using this piece of wood or whatever, so it's floating freely, so what would be the trajectory of the center? And what would be the rotation? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have already guessed that the movement will be along these lines. Why? Well, because there is an attractive uh, force uh, to one of those. There is an, uh, uh, um, an attractive force from this one to, to, to this one. And then there is a repelling force from this to this and this to this. So opposite uh, attract and similar um, repel each other. So we have four different forces. Uh, repel, attract, uh, repel, attract, or whatever the dif difference is. So all these four forces are acting together. And as a result, this little magnet will float in such a way that its center will always move along this line. If it's already close to this one, it will 
uh, flow to this direction. If it's close to this end of the permanent magnet, it will flow to this direction. And as it flows, it will turn in such a way that it, it's a small one. So the difference in distance between these two is very uh, small. So the first thing that it will do, it will turn, obviously. And it will turn in such a way that North Pole here would be South Pole here and south here, so north is here. Because the attraction between this and south pole is stronger than attraction between this and north pole. So it will turn this way, and then since this thing is closer to this, it will start moving. This thing is still repelling the north pole, right? Um, I mean, the south, south, this is south and this is south, so this south will still repel. So that's why it doesn't go straight this way but under the both forces it will so it will go this way but this will still push it pu pu uh, push it out right so this is and this is the resulting uh, direction of the movement more than that the direction of this orientation of this probe object will be in such a way that it's always tangential to this magnetic line so, to describe the movement of any probe object, we use these magnetic lines, magnetic force lines. And um, again, that's the trajectory of the center. And as far as orientation of this probe object, it's always tangential to the trajectory. Okay. Okay, what else? Um, now, what's important about this is the lines will be um, lines cannot cross. Why? Well, consider two lines are crossing, and we will put the magnet, uh, magnetic, uh, the probe uh, magnet in uh, at this point. Well, since line is a trajectory, and if two lines crossing each other, which direction will be? Uh, will the probe object be moving? Obviously, there is some kind of um, inconsistency here. So, magnetic lines, magnetic field lines, never cross. Now, there are also, um, they do not have the beginning and end. Although it seems to be that they are s starting here and ending here, uh, or, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. That's not exactly true, because we always connect them inside. Now, why do we do this? Whenever we are talking about not a permanent magnet, which is solid thing inside, but um, something like a loop of the electric current, which has um, properties of, of the magnet, the inside is empty. So if you have a loop and there is an electric current, then the magnetic field will be completely enclosed against themselves. So here we also assume that magnetic field lines are continuing inside. So it's always um, closed. I mean, it's some kind of ellipsoid in this case, not exactly the ellipsoid. Uh, and it's more more like a circle in this case, but it's also not exactly a circle because the number of the lines inside here is the same as number of lines outside, right? And we have more room here. So here this is more dense um, location, more, m more dense uh, uh, position of all these lines. Now, what is the density in, in, in this particular case? Now, here we also have more dense um, position of uh, the lines, let's say, let, let's say here, right? Because the number of lines is the same. So every line, whatever is here, on any distance, eventually ends up here. Now, when we are talking about magnetic lines in, in the abstract sense, you obviously understand that there are infinite number of these lines. I mean, I have drawn like three of them, uh, and three, so it's six of them. No, it's not six, obviously, it's infinite number. Um, so we are just 
putting this uh, this picture as only like six lines because well first of all we cannot really draw an infinite number and secondly you understand that every point on the surface of the north pole can be the point through which the trajectory goes and and ends up in in the south and then continuing inside so the number of these magnetic field lines is infinite obviously however when we are picturing them we are picturing them in such a way that the density of these lines is greater here than let's say here and it represents the strength of the magnetic field so this picture with magnetic lines actually represents trajectory of the movement um, and also the uh, position of this magnet uh, tangential to it to, to this trajectory and also it represents the intensity of the field the greater the density of the lines the greater the field the strength of the field um, obviously if you will put this particular object right in the middle here it will not move because the forces will um, uh, uh, balance each other now, if you will put this somewhere here, facing, if it's, uh, if this is, let's say, north and you will face it south, it will move directly through one straight line here until it just touches it. If you will put the same north against north, it will move into this direction. Okay, so one of the lines is this one and it seems to be that these lines are not connected, right? Well, you can always consider them to be connected in the infinitely remote point. Okay, um, now the question is, we have this magnet. What is the source, what is the North Pole and what is the South Pole on any magnet? Well, um, I can answer it this way. In the very beginning, when people were actually uh, dealing only with permanent magnets, which they have found basically in the Earth, and they noticed that the, uh, that the permanent magnet is turning itself in, in some specific way, pointing with one side always, let's say, north, or to the North Star, if you wish. Now, when they have noticed that, they have called actually this side of the magnet the north because it points to a geographical north. And obviously the opposite was the south. So that was the first magnets, let's say. Well, then if you have some other magnets, you can always compare it with the ones which you have already determined which one is north and which one is south. So if two sides are attracting uh, each other, it means they are different, north and one, then the south and another. So from these first magnets, they can determine the polarity of any other magnet. You don't really have to, you know, hang it on the on the th on the thread and then see how it turns uh, relative to the north pole. So that's how I would say people determine which one is which. Obviously, there are <laughs> much better ways to determine it, but that's how it was in the very beginning. Um, also what's important is, now if, if you have a permanent magnet which already marked north and south, and uh, you will allow it to freely rotate, again let's put it on a uh, piece of wood into the water so it's floating, and obviously it will turn in such a way that it's north pole uh, points to the geographical north. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that the Earth, as a planet, is a permanent magnet, and technically speaking, its south magnetic pole is where the north geographical pole is. So that's why there is a little confusion. When we are talking about north magnetic pole, what does it mean? Is it the magnetic pole which is close to the north geographical um, uh, pole, which means technically speaking, magnetically speaking, it's the south pole. So, magnetically speaking, south pole of the Earth is on the north. However, when we are talking about quote unquote north magnetic pole, there is ambiguity in this. You know, some people actually understand that this is 
not the magnetically north pole, it's a magnetic pole which is close to the geographically north, which is magnetically south. Okay, have I confused you? <laughs> anyway, so that's about which pole is south and which pole is north. Um, now, the direction of these forces. Now, what's also important is um, we are assigning a direction. Now, the direction of the if you remember when we were talking about electric current, direct electric current, um, we were saying that uh, by definition the direction of the electric current is from positive to negative. Now, when people were investigating this electricity, they didn't really know that electrons are causing this electric current. They were just basically thinking about two poles as basically in opposite in some way and they notice that there is something which is which they call the current between these poles and they called one of them positive another negative and it's much later they found out that the positive is where the, the, the deficiency of electrons is and the negative is where the excess of electrons and the electrons are actually going from negative to positive however by definition the direction of the current was just defined as from positive to negative. So it's purely artificial without any kind of physical uh, substance in it. Here again, purely artificially, if this is a North Pole and this is a South Pole, we put the arrow in this direction, from North to South. So magnetic lines are going from North to south and then inside the magnet go to the south from the south to north. So outside of the magnet is from north to south, inside from south to north. Well, that's how we have defined it. This is a direction of the magnetic field lines. By definition, no talk about this. That's it. What else? Um, so we were talking about um, magnetic force which which has two directions as I was saying uh, the uh, translational movement of the center plus rotational now if there is a rotational it means there is a torque now um, I didn't mention it before but this construction of uh, object like this one uh, magnetic object with, with two poles it's called magnetic dipole it's very important, dipole. Now, in electricity, we have monopoles, because we could have only one point charge positive or another point charge negative. Monopole means there is only one pole. It's either negative or positive. In this case, we always deal with dipoles, because there are always two poles, north and south, in magnetism. So that's as far as terminology is, con is concerned. So this magnet is a dipole in some way, and this pole, and this magnet is also a dipole. This is bigger, this is a smaller, but it doesn't really matter. They're all dipoles. And so, okay, so basically this lecture was about direction of the movement, which means it's actually a direction of the forces. So there is a force which is going along the magnetic line, and there is, a, the, the, there is a torque which turns the uh, probe object to have a position tangential to the line. So this is more about the uh, direction of the magnetic forces around the permanent magnet. Also, every vector has magnitude as well. So we have to measure the force. And that is something which we will talk about in the next lecture. So right now, I wanted to concentrate on kind of geometrical properties of the magnetic field. So we're talking about mostly about direction of the magnetic forces. Uh, magnitude, will, magnitude will be next. So that's about it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about magnetic field lines. Yes, one more thing, very important. If you will take the permanent magnet, it has north and south poles. Now, why do we have this polarity? Why, if we will put it, let's say, on a floating piece of wood, why 
it will turn in some way or another. Well, here is the very important uh, thing. You see the density of the magnetic lines inside is significantly greater than outside, right? Outside we have all the space, actually infinite space of both ways, and all that infinity should be squeezed into this magnet. That's what makes it um, non-symmetrical in some way. This non-symmetrical thing is basically forcing to have these poles. Now, same thing if we have this uh, circular movement of electricity, of electric current in the loop. All these magnetic lines, which are infinite of them, they are spreading thinner and thinner, and the density is significantly greater inside. Again, there is a non-similarity. What happens if you will break this loop, if you will put it like this? So there is still a loop, right? Now, let's do it instead of this. You will break it in such a way that you will have only one single line and put the current in it. We will see that it's still magnetic field. Now, what happens with the magnetic field lines? Well, each line is around the piece of this loop, right? So here we will have lines, magnetic lines like this, and they're also concentric. So this thing is purely symmetrical. It doesn't have north and south poles. So if you have a line, a straight line, not looped, just straight line, and put electric current, these magnetic um, field lines will have to open up and that's what will be, right? I mean, if you will take it and close, you will have this one. If you will cut it and open, that will be this one. And this one doesn't have magnetic poles because it's all symmetrical. Every line is symmetrical. So you don't necessarily, if you have a magnetic field, like in this case, you do not necessarily have something which is north and south. You might have a situation when the field exists and you can always have a direction, because there is a direction here, so you will have a direction here. So everything is here. However, there is no north and south poles, and if you put this construction um, with infinite uh, uh, current line in the magnetic field of the Earth, it will not actually turn any any way because these loops are kind of symmetrical. Okay, that's it. That's it for today. I do suggest you to read the um, all the notes for this lecture because on the unisor.com every lecture has a video part and the textual part. So read the textual part. It's always helpful. And um, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.